Good morning and welcome to Reflections with Pastor Ellen. I am Pastor Ellen. My pronouns are she, her, and hers, and it is my great joy to welcome you um, this morning as we explore Trinity Sunday in the life of the Western Christian Church. The Sunday following Pentecost is celebrated as Trinity Sunday, which uh, honors God as uh, some would call the Father. Others refer to God as the Creator, uh, the Son, Jesus Christ, and then the Holy Spirit. So uh, as I planned as I prepared for today at our 1030 service. We are very blessed that our bishop and cabinet have put together a worship service. So stay tuned to either this YouTube channel or Facebook and li listen to the word brought by Bishop Hisu Jung today. But I thought, you know, we really should take an opportunity to explore what is meant by Trinity Sunday. Because you know, Eastern Christianity doesn't recognize it in, in, in the way Western Christianity does. Judaism doesn't recognize uh, the God of Abraham as a Trinitarian God. Um, it's monotheistic. And uh, Allah out of um, Islam is not a triune God, but in Christianity, Western Christianity, it is. And so how do you explain um, this concept of three in one? Because we claim to be monotheistic, but we say we're Trinitarian. So I'd like to share uh, some past, some a passage from several passages from the Gospel of Mark. These are all from the first chapter. The beginning of the good news about Jesus the Messiah, the Son of God, as it is written in Isaiah the prophet. I will send my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. A voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. And so John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness, preaching a baptism of repentance for forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him, confessing their sins. They were baptized by John in the Jordan River. John wore clothing made of ham camel's hair and with a leather belt around his waist. And he ate locusts and wild honey. And this was his message. After me comes the one more powerful than I, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptize you with water but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. At the time Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan, just as Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven being open and the spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son whom I love, with you I am well pleased. At once the spirit sent him out into the desert, and he was in the wilderness for 40 days, being tempted by Satan. He was with the wild animals and the angels attended him. That is Mark chapter 1, verses 1 through 13 from the um, Cultural Backgrounds Study Bible. So when we examine the Bible, we see Jesus is the Son of God. So they're acknowledging Jesus as Son. They're acknowledging the God um, as Father. And we have the Spirit all involved 
Um, I think it's a great blessing, even if it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. And as you saw when before I came and sat down, we have three flowers uh, as a symbol today um, as part of one plant. So the um, God, the creator, God, the father, the son, Jesus Christ, the advocate, the Holy Spirit, are all part of the same thing. But there's different attributes that we understand. And all of them are in relationship to one another. And I think that's a really big key that they are relationship with one another. And we know we have a relational God a God who, God who seeks us constantly, who searches our heart and our inmost being, our God who is constantly calling us into relationship. First, the, uh, Jesus said the greatest commandment was to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. And the second is to love your neighbor as yourself. The law is summed up in these. So what we previously uh, learned about in the commandments is whittled down to these two all about love. And not just any love, but God's transforming love as God first loved us and we in turn can love God. And God is transforming our hearts. And out of a transformed heart, we love and serve our neighbor. And so we have relationship with God. We have relationship with self. We have relationship with neighbor. And in following Christ shows us how to live and move and have our being. Um, Christ came because people needed to have life and have it abundantly. And he showed people about healing. He was healing constantly everywhere, all kinds of diseases and illnesses and conditions, and was working in all of this healing for reconciliation and restoration, building relationship upon relationship upon relationship, bringing communities back into wholeness. And I think that's the message of the triune God of the Trinity. It's about people working together, building relationships that the God self, the sacred and holiness at the core of each person is witnessed and seen and celebrate, celebrated in each and every one. It also allows us to accept and believe in diversity, that everything is not just one thing, but it's multiples. When we look around, even if we look at this plant with the three flowers in, in the background, the flowers are not identical. The leaves on the plant are not identical. And there is beauty. And there is this wholeness in the midst of the diversity. And I can't even account like the different kinds of flowers that there are. And God granted us all the flowers, all the different trees, all the different colors. And said together, you reflect the image of God. And so I think the gift of, whole, of Trinity Sunday is that God created all of us to work together to reflect the beauty, the honor and glory of the sacred and holy. And our understanding of the triune God calls us to continually work in relationship with one another, to continually seek, to learn and to grow. And um, the more we do that, the more we are willing to recognize that the complexity of people and the complexity of relationships woven together makes the beautiful tapestry of life. And as God has called the God self 
into relationship. So are we called into relationship with God, with neighbor, and with self? I hope and pray that you are able to open yourselves to the love of God so that your heart may be transformed. And as your heart's transformed, may you experience the healing that you need. And in many cases, you may not even realize you need that healing. But so that you can then see, you can then witness with the eyes of your heart. 